If you subscribe to the channel, you'll get lots of interesting videos like this one. And if you like the video, it'll really help us out. Please comment down below for any other interesting things that also really helps us out as well. Hi, and welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So we were talking about grammars last time, and I mentioned that we're gonna start talking about a grammar useful for regular languages. And notably, that is something called a regular grammar. So what is a grammar? So, uh, I mean, uh, what is a regular grammar? So again, we have a, oops, we have a set V of variables. So V is going to be the set of variables here. We're going to have an alphabet sigma, which is going to be the terminals. Um, so this sigma is actually is very similar to the sigma we saw for DFAs and NFAs. It, 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 it takes the same uh, role, it's just that it's called terminals here. So these are terminals. We have a start variable, which is, we're going to call it S. So just like before, the start variable is where you start, and you start applying rules uh, with that start variable. And then what we're going to call R is the set of rules, but we're going to have a very specific set of rules. And in fact, there are going to be only four types of rules that are allowed. So, uh, so what are the four rule types that are allowed? We can have a variable go to the empty string. We can have a vi any variable go to a single character. So A is a terminal. And so we have to think, what should we put into these rules so that it, it actually models the regular languages exactly? So if we just stuck with these, then if I start with the start variable, the the only thing I could do is make either the empty string or single character. I can't go to another variable. So another rule type that is allowed is one variable can go to another one. So B is a variable here. And in fact, in all of these, A is a variable. Um, yeah, so one variable can go to another one. But if we just stuck with this, then uh, what, what would happen is we can go over to another variable, but that means, but we still can't add anything on to what we could make before. So then the final thing, the final rule type is where we have uh, capital A, a variable, makes a terminal followed by a variable. And in fact, that's all we actually will need. So these are the uh, types of rules that are allowed. So the question is, do regular grammars recognize the regular languages? And it turns out that they do. So if we want to show that regular grammars recognize the regular languages, then that means we have to be able to convert from a regular grammar to something that we know represents those languages, namely like a DFA or an NFA or even a regular expression. Any one of those would work. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to show that we can convert from a regular grammar to an NFA and also from any NFA to a regular grammar. Okay, so that actually tells us that it, once I show this, that regular grammars recognize exactly the regular languages. Okay, so let's do this first one right here. So let's show that if we have a regular grammar, I can make an NFA that accepts exactly the same language, okay? So let's let R, actually R is a bad name, let's call G uh, be a regular grammar. People usually abbreviate this to RG. I think that's uh, a little too much, but okay. So we, let's, let's make an NFA to make an NFA. Well, the, it seems kind of impossible, right? Because a grammar has these variables and terminals and rules and whatnot, whereas an NFA has states and transitions and stuff. Those aren't really the same thing. So how are we able to do it? But let's actually look at the rules. So let's see. 
Well, what does an NFA really do? It has transitions between states, right? And it has final states and a start state and whatnot. But think about what it's doing here, what the regular grammar is doing here. So you start with the start variable. And let's say you apply a rule. If we apply the first one, then we end up with the empty string, and I can't apply anything else because there's no empty string on the left side. If we apply the second one, we only get a terminal, and that's not on the left side either. We could get a, a one variable out of it, but think about what that means. We have one variable, and we replace it with another variable. So that means we had one variable to start with, and we still end up with one variable, maybe a different one. But And the same thing is true right here, because the terminal right here never appears on the left side. So that means that at every single point, uh, until the very end when we uh, apply one of the first two, we're always going to have exactly one variable along for the ride. But think about how an N NFA works. An NFA works, you start in the start state, you apply a transition, you're still in, is, in exactly one state. It's not the case that you can go to many states at the same time. You always will make one choice. A DFA is simulating all of those possibilities in the state itself, but you still, in the NFA, if the NFA is simulating right now, it can only do one state at a time. So that's actually the main idea here. So let's let uh, v be the variables, uh, sigma to be the uh, terminals uh, of the of the grammar. I mean, r to be the the rules, and s to be the start variable. So how are we going to make the NFA here? Well, we I have to specify to you the set of states, the alphabet. Oops what the transition function is, uh, what the start state is, and what the final states are. Okay, So the start states are actually going to be the variables, which is pretty cool. Okay, So, uh, but there's going to be one addition we're going to have to make in a second. The alphabet is just going to be the terminals. The things on the transitions are going to be what the terminals are. Why? Because think about what a regular grammar, or any grammar, does. Once it makes a terminal, it's never going to change in a regular grammar. So in some sense, that character is produced. So the role of the strings that are being generated here are the ones in the NFA and whatnot that are going to be recognized. The thing that's consumed on the NFA transition is going to be the character or not that is consumed, uh, uh, not consumed, it's produced when you apply the rule. So in this case, we're producing the character A, but in the NFA, we want to interpret that to be that's the character we consume going from A to B. That's the cost, in some sense, of going from A to B, state A to state B. So that's why we have the terminals being the, the, the characters on the, the alphabet of the NFA. The transition function will get back to. The start state, well, what's the start state? Well, it's the states are variables, so the start state naturally is going to be the start variable. So that's going to be S here. And then, but we got to think about final states. So if I just say, well, uh, let's say that state uh, B is a final state, um, and, and we call it a final state. And let's say we wanted to apply this rule right here. We go from state A to state B. Then that means state, A's, state B is a final state. But think about what this rule actually says. This says replace this variable with this terminal and this variable. The goal of the regular grammar is to make a string of terminals not to have this variable hanging around anymore. So we actually can't make any one oops, we can't make any one of these states final purely because then that means in the regular grammar the 
corresponding um, string that we've made so far has a variable still there in it. So what I'm going to do here is actually kind of clever. I'm actually going to union this with another state I'm going to call f. So f is going to be the only final state in the entire NFA. Okay, And what that state is for is to handle these two transitions. Okay, So if, if these two transitions are in there, then I'm going to go to that final state. Okay, And the reason for doing that is, well, this f right here is not a variable, so there's no issue there. And if we apply one of these two rules, then the one variable that was there is no longer there anymore. So that matches up purely perfectly. Okay, so what are we going to do here for the, the transition function? So if we have a rule of the form a goes to epsilon, we're going to uh, do something. We're going to have a transition in the NFA to be from state A going to uh, that final state on eps uh, an epsilon transition to that final state, just like we were saying before. If we have A goes to little a, then we're going to do something very similar. We're going to go uh, on input A to that single final state. I'm actually going to move this down here. I'm actually going to move this over to so we have some room. Uh, if we have a uh, capital A goes to another state B, then in the NFA we're going to go from state A to state B on epsilon, an epsilon transition. And if we have capital A goes to little a capital B, you can probably already guess what we're going to do is to go on input A to state B. Okay, So in some sense, each of the transitions is modeling one or simulating one of the rule applications. And since we're simulating them one at a time, we actually will do exactly the same simulation. But then you may think, OK, well, isn't the NFA um, uh, completely non-deterministic. What about the, the rules here? What about the regular grammar? The regular grammar is non-deterministic too because I can apply any rule that I want. I don't have to apply a certain rule. I can apply any one that I want to. So those are non-deterministic too. Isn't that cool? So that's a way to show that every single regular grammar can be converted into an NFA. But what about the other way? So how do we show the other way? So from any NFA into a regular grammar. It turns out that we can actually, because this simulation is done exactly one for one in both of them, it turns out we can do almost exactly the same thing. So let's have the NFA have states Q, alphabet sigma, transition delta, Q0 and F. And so what do we want to make of the regular grammar? We want to make variables. Um, uh, uh, yeah, the terminals, the rule set, and what the start variable is. Well, naturally, the start variable is going to be Q0, and the variables are going to be the original states. Okay, It's just reversing the same construction that we did before. The the terminals are going to be just the alphabet of the NFA, ex exactly the same as before. But what about the rules here? So what are the two things that can happen? Well, whatever happens, let's just say we have a transition from state A to state B on character A. Then what is the rule that we're going to make? We're going to make A, capital A on the left side, going to what is produced on the transition, which is little a and the state we go to, which is B. And in the other case, if it was uh, capital A goes to capital B with an epsilon transition, then it's very similar here. So capital A goes to uh, capital B. 
uh, and it, it, it's identical to what we did before. But the question is now, we have final states this time. How do we handle that here? So let's say that um, if A is a final state, what do we actually do? So this is the one thing that changes. So think about what a final state is supposed to do with a, with a NFA. If we're done reading the string, then we are allowed to stop in that state and accept. Okay, so for the purposes of the regular grammar, we have that one variable um, that is still there. So then that means if we ended up with the one variable still going on, which is corresponding to a final state, we should allow the regular grammar to stop applying rules at that point. And what stopping rules means is that the variable is no longer there. And how do we get rid of a variable without producing another character, because that would imply another transition is taken, is to have that variable go to epsilon. So we're going to add the rule a goes to epsilon. Okay. And in fact, the interesting thing is the rule of where a variable goes to a single terminal and nothing else it turns out that that is actually not necessary because in this conversion from an NFA to a regular grammar, we actually never use that. Uh, it happened to be the second rule type. It's just the other three uh, we actually may need, depending on the NFA. But that's how to convert any NFA into a regular grammar. So from these two, what we can tell is that every regular grammar has a regular language and every regular language has a regular grammar. So in fact, we found yet another way of expressing the regular languages. You may think, who the hell cares about this? Why would I need another form of the regular languages? It turns out that our previous discussion about having um, a mix of variables and terminals on one of the two sides is very, very powerful because the regular grammar only permits certain things on both sides. If we allow more stuff on the left or the right side, it turns out we can actually recognize things that are not regular. And that's where we're going to head to next. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave your thoughts about regular grammars down in the video description. Another question you may uh, want to put into the, try to answer in the comments is, uh, what if I put the terminal on the other side of the variable instead of before. Would that actually change things? What if I added a fifth rule type where we have the four that we have here as well as the one where we have the terminal on the other side? Does that change things? It actually is a very interesting answer. So make sure to put some comments down below. That really helps up with the growth of the channel. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really, really, really helps us out. And as always, I'll see you next time.